Hello, so welcome to another uh, time of us talking about Ephesians together and reading Ephesians and just hearing some thoughts that I have on it. Um, yeah, I'm recording this from home today. Um, I don't know what the sound's like because outside it's very, very windy and next door's cat wants to come in. And all I can hear is this cat meowing in the background. So if you do hear a cat meow at some point, that's next door's cat just going, it's windy, let me in. <laughs> but anyway, so we're reading Ephesians together and it's this week, it's Ephesians 3 verses 14 to 21. And what's really strange about this is I've just spoke about Ephesians 3 on Sunday. And actually, this was not a planned, I'll talk about it on Sunday and talk about midweek. It's been one of those happy coincidences or as God incidences as I like to call it when these things sort of just match up it really feels that God wants to say something to us and I, I just couldn't believe it when I realized that the two coincided so let me read this to you it's Ephesians 3 verses 14 to 21 for this reason I kneel before the father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Great verses. Absolutely great verses. Um, yeah. And I love the fact that Paul again prays for the Ephesians. I've talked about this in previous weeks, how actually prayer is a unifier. That actually Paul not only tells the Ephesians that he's going to pray for them, but he actually shares his prayer with them. And actually, what does that do? This means that the Ephesians are able to hear Paul's heart for them more than I'm praying for you. This is what I'm praying for you. Paul is able to share his heart for them. And even though Paul can't be there in person with them. They can still know his heart. They can still be drawn closer to him. They can still feel more unified by the spirit because of this. We live in a world right now where we can't be with each other. But when we share our prayers and scriptures with each other, it does bring us closer together. This morning, I got a text from someone at church that didn't just say that they were praying for me, but they told me what they were praying for and gave a scripture with it. I was so encouraged by that. And I felt closer to them as a result of it. Really, really helpful stuff. And this is what Paul is doing here um, in Ephesians. We've talked a lot about purpose. And how actually we are united in purpose. We're united in what God is calling us all to do. We all have the same purpose to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. With everyone, not just some people, but with everyone. And Paul's prayer for the Ephesians really helped. He's like a prayer born out of equipping them to be able to share the gospel with all people. So it's a prayer that can be prayed for us as well. Because we are a people called, all of us, with the same purpose to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all. So when Paul prays this for the Ephesians, we can pray this for ourselves and each other as well. And this prayer is really helpful in helping us to share the gospel. Paul prays that um, they be strengthened in their in, by the Holy Spirit in their inner being. And I've got to be honest with you. If we're going to be people who share the gospel with everyone, we all need this. We all need to be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit in our inner beings. Why? Because when we share the gospel with people, we will encounter opposition. Either from them or even from the enemy. 
The enemy doesn't want us sharing the gospel or bringing God's kingdom here. And sometimes people don't want us to share the gospel with them either. We're going to need that strengthening of the Holy Spirit in our inner being to counteract that. And Paul writes this not just as a thought, but from knowledge and experience. Paul is writing this letter from where? From prison. Why is Paul in prison? Because he shared the gospel with everyone. He is talking from experience that when you do share the gospel with people, you will encounter opposition and you need that strengthening of the Holy Spirit in your inner being to counteract any rejection we might get. Please be praying for the strengthening uh, of your inner beings by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, some people have said, oh, I don't need to be strengthened in my inner I'm strong enough. Or oh, that's for weak people. No, it's not. I don't want to be strong. I want the strength of God in me. And there's always room for more of that. That doesn't make me a weak person. That makes me God reliant. And we all need that. What else? He prays that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith. And again, we all need that if we are going to be stepping out in our purpose of sharing the gospel. It's heat Christ's gospel. And if Jesus isn't in our hearts when we're sharing our faith, it becomes about sharing head knowledge. We need Christ in our hearts. And I love the fact he uses the word dwell. Dwell is an alive word. Christ is alive within us. So when we share the gospel, it's not just us, but it's bringing that alive Christ into the world, into people's lives through us. The Gospel of John uses a similar thing where Jesus says, abide in me. Dwell, abide, they're the same words. And it's very easy to cut ourselves off from dwelling or abiding in Christ. If you don't know what to pray for someone, pray that they would be a dwelling with Christ in their hearts through faith. Why through faith? Because we can't see him. But it doesn't mean he's not there. That's why we need that faith. We need to be praying more and more for Christ to be dwelling in each other's hearts, not just as facts in our head or a story to tell, but a living relationship with Christ in our hearts because he is alive. And then Paul goes on to talk about not only being rooted in love, but having a greater revelation of the love of Christ. Jesus is love. God is love. Christ is rooted in love. And the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, is rooted in what? Love. Love for all. We need to be rooted in that love, not just as a concept of something we should do, but we need to be rooted in the love of Christ. Because if we're not rooted and established in the love of Christ, we love as like a chore. But something we should do. That's not what love is. The, the more I invest in my relationship with Christ and the more I realise how much he loves me. The more I realise that love isn't just for me, but for all people. That Christ, yes, he died on the cross for me as much as he died on the cross for you and for anyone. And so the more I get rooted in my relationship with Christ, the less it becomes about facts and headlines, the more it becomes a relationship of love in my heart with him. And so the greater revelation of how high and how wide and how long and how deep the love of Christ is not only for me, but for all people through my relationship with Christ. The more I share the gospel with people, not because I should, but simply because I can, because I know it's the best news ever it's born out of our relationship if you know if you don't know what to pray for people pray that people's relationship with christ would deepen that we would have a greater revelation of christ's love for us that we would be more permanently rooted and established in the love of christ because when we are 
It doesn't just affect us here, but it helps us in living out our God-given purpose to bring the kingdom of God where we are and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we can't help ourselves. We're born, it comes out of that relationship. We're born again, made new, more than head knowledge, in the depth of our hearts. And then Paul ends this section by reminding us that God can do infinitely more than we could even imagine. Why? Because it's his power. Because God is bigger. God is greater. And God can do immeasurably more than we can ask and imagine according to his power at work in us. His power at work in us. It's not for us to limit who Christ is for. God's power is for all and can do anything, anywhere and break through with anyone in every generation. That's the power of God. We should not limit that. We need to be a people who are open to God's power within us and God's power through us. Not have expectations of what God can and can't do or will or won't do. Let's just create opportunities and be open with God so he can work and blow our expectations away. We have to remain open. And that means we share the gospel with whoever we're open to God prompting us to speak to people or offer prayer for people knowing that we've been strengthened by the power of his Holy Spirit knowing that Christ dwells with us knowing that we've got that rooted relationship with Christ so nothing anyone will say to us will change that relationship with Christ and the fact that we are rooted in his love knowing that no rejection on this earth can take away the fact that Jesus loves us with everything and when we openly step out like this we will see God's kingdom brought here we will see God do immeasurably more than we can imagine what a prayer that Paul prays here for the Ephesians and it's a prayer that we can all experience if you never know what to pray for people pray this open up your bible turn to Ephesians 3 14 to 21 and pray that prayer for people and tell people you're praying that it's a prayer that unifies us it's a prayer that brings us closer together it's a prayer that impassions and emboldens and sees the purposes of God filled out through the body of Christ bringing us all together if you never know what to pray for me pray that I would love it But it's a prayer that brings us all closer together. So wherever you are, stay safe, wash your hands, follow the government guidelines. And I cannot wait to start to see you all really soon.